And so Jody Wilson-Raybould, who is no longer a, a uh, minister, is in a suite of offices and does not want to move out. And uh, there is, you know, sort of a discussion with her in the House of Commons. And I'm, I'm, I want to get your views on this. So she was a minister, a big deal, and now she's an independent backbencher. And I'm not saying they're irrelevant because nobody that sits in the House of Commons can possibly be thought of as irrelevant. But should she keep her office, Susan? So I think what's important for... No, is the short answer. No, <laughs> no. She gets to have an office, but she doesn't get to decide where her office is. There's parliamentary tradition and convention that offices are allocated first to the government party, then to the opposition, and it's by seat, order, and rank in the House of Commons. That's the way it's been done. And you don't get to set down stakes and say no and cross your arms and go, huh, I'm not moving. So... Absolutely, she should move. It's unparliamentary behavior on her part. Is it a strange story? It's a very strange story. <laughs> there are 338 members of the House of Commons, and when you're an independent, you get choice 338 out of 338. You literally get the last office that's allocated to you. That's the way it works. That's how offices get allocated. Most MPs have no say on whether offices. They might ask and say, hey, WIP, I'd like to be in this office space, and the WIP sometimes will try to accommodate those people who are team players um, or ministerial suites are obviously they have a larger space contingent. She is number 338 or number 338 and you basically take whatever's left and no other member of parliament in recent history can I can I remember going from being in government to now being an opposition or an independent has made this a huge stink. I, I'm sorry that I think it's time to pack the moving boxes up. There are two things here. One is I think it's a disappointment for people who saw her as very hopeful and 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 kind of a, a beacon of you know decency and honesty and all of, you know all of the ethics and all of that kind of thing for her to be making her first big thing on something that looks like an entitlement uh, sort of attitude. So that's one thing. The other thing is I think I think these guys are right, but it's about more than just tradition and rules in the House of Commons. It's that you get elected to do a job. And you, the things that come along with that are the tools that you need to do that job. So, for instance, when the Liberals went to 34 seats and, and became the third party and the NDP became the official opposition with 103 seats, there were Liberals that lost their offices and lo lost their, their mm. office space and everything. And I was sympathetic to it because I know that that's really hard. But they're not, it's not, they're not their offices. They're the offices of the people of Canada. And when the people of Canada ex you know, elects a government... They expect that government to have the tools and resources. It's like you become uh, the official opposition and you decide, oh, well, I'm not going to take the things that come with that. You can keep all the questions and question period. You can keep all those seats. You can keep all those offices. You get elected to do a job. You need the tools to do that job. That it's includes the offices. It's not your office. It's just the office. <laughs> it's funny. She, the word she has used in describing this is petty. She was dangerous to open that. It's dangerous for her to open that can of, can of worms because it's precisely what she looks like. And Gary, Susan, thanks so much. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Always nice to have you and thanks have a chat you. with you.